Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Jamaica News in Review Two people shot in Waterford, Portmore. Two people were shot and injured in Waterford, Portmore, in St. Catherine. The Corporate Communications Unit CCU of the Jamaica Constabulary Force confirmed the incident. It said the shooting took place sometime after 10 o'clock. The two people were taken to hospital. The CCU said it had no further details and investigations are ongoing. Westmoreland man shot in attempted robbery charged. 22-year-old Jamin Baker, who tried to rob a last firearm holder and was shot in the Great Westmoreland over a week ago, has been charged. Baker, who is from Whitehall in the parish, was charged with wounding with intent, illegal possession of firearm and ammunition, and attempted robbery, the police said in a statement. About 8.15 p.m. on Friday, June 3rd, a couple was sitting on the beach of the Norman Manor Boulevard when they were approached by Baker. He allegedly brandished a firearm and demanded they hand over their items, according to police reports. When his demands were not met, he allegedly shot the couple. The man, who is a licensed firearm holder, shot at Baker who escaped on a motorcycle. However, Baker was hit and turned up at hospital for medical attention. He was later pointed out to the police, charged, placed under police guard. The man and his partner received gunshot wounds and were hospitalized. The police say a court date for Baker is being finalized. Spanish Town shooting linked to Clanksman gang feud, police suspect. An internal feud linked to Clanksman gangsters is suspected to be behind the shooting of three men on Jones Avenue in Spanish Town, St. Catherine. The incident happened around 8.27 p.m., Police sources said. The Corporate Communications Unit of the Jamaica Constabulary Force confirmed the shooting as non fatal but said it had no further details. All three people remained in hospital, with one said to be in serious condition. One of the men who was shot is allegedly a member of the Black Man faction of the Clansman Gang, a police investigator reported. That faction is known as One Don, and its alleged leader, Andre Blackman Bryan, is currently on trial with other alleged members before the Home Circuit Court over their involvement in the gang. It's understood that two of the men were at a bar and a third was returning from a shop when a motor car drove up with men aboard who fired on them. One man reported they drove himself to the hospital while the other two were assisted. The attackers escaped. The police have named the Spanish town based Clansman gang as one of the country's most notorious criminal organizations. Five years old, among six injured in Manchester crash. A five-year-old boy is said to be among six people injured in a two-vehicle crash on the gutters to Alligator Pan Main Road in Manchester on Monday. Councillor candidate Omar Robinson, Alligator Pan Division People's National Party told reporters that the crash happened about 3 p.m. and involved a public passenger vehicle and a private motor car. The female driver of the motor car along with occupants of the taxi were taken to hospital for treatment. The gutters to Alligator Pan Main Road links communities close to southern Manchester and southeastern St. Elizabeth border to Spur Tree Hill and its environs. Farm worker killed in car crash. One man is dead and another hospitalized after a motor vehicle collision along the Marinesville Main Road in Westmoreland on Sunday, June 12. The dead man has been identified as 25-year-old Michael Blackwood a farm worker of Rivertop Bluefields in the parish. Reports are that about 6.30 p.m., the driver of a Toyota Kingfish that was heading in the direction of Savannah Lamar lost control of the vehicle and collided with a utility pole. The driver was rushed to the Savannah Lamar Public General Hospital where the occupant died on the spot. The police and fire brigade were summoned to the scene. The deceased friend, Denroy Mary, told reporters that he is in disbelief. Me can't believe him dead. He's supposed to fly out next week, he shared. Blackwood was due to depart the island for work in the United States in a matter of days. Two minutes ago, me and him just a talk about a function, only to get a call to this happen. A distraught Mary added. Saint and man charged after gun found in motorbike. A saint on neighbor, 23-year-old Trey Walker, has been charged by the police after being held with an illegal gun. Walker, who is from Claremont and Steertown, was charged on Saturday with illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. 
a court date is to be sent. The police report that a team was on mobile patrol in the community when they signal Walker to stop a motorbike he was driving. They say a search of the motorbike was conducted and a homemade firearm with one 9mm round in the chamber was found under the seat of the motorbike. He was charged after a question and answer session was held. JLP Councillor Caretaker Killed in St. Catherine Crash Jamaica Labour Party JLP Councillor Caretaker Omar Francis was killed in a car crash in Blanche District in Kitsenton in St. Catherine. Francis, who was alone in the vehicle, was reported on his way home when he lost control of the SUV he was driving and crashed into a concrete structure along the side of the road. The ruling JLP recently selected him as its representative for the Point Hill Division in the St. Catherine West Central constituency, whose MP is Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton. No words, sadness Tufton tweeted. He added, a short life, but you live true to your convictions. We will continue to journey and always remember the role you played. Francis replaced the previous representative, Wesley Soko, who died December 2019. One dead, five hospitalized in St. Andrew crash. An early morning crash in Golden Avenue in St. Andrew, in the vicinity of the Irvine Hall Gate of the University of the West Indies, has left one man dead. The driver and four other occupants received injuries and were transported to hospital. They were admitted in serious but stable condition. The deceased has been identified as 24-year-old Dennis Moody, otherwise called Bob Up, of August Stonewood in St. Andrew. The police report that about 12.58 a.m., Moody was a passenger in a Nissan Bluebird Silky motor car when the driver allegedly lost control of the vehicle, which then crashed into an embankment and a utility pole and then overturned. Investigations are ongoing. Another Clarendon school mourns as Jamaica loses 10 teachers in one month. The Pleasant Valley Primary and Infant School in Clarendon is mourning the passing of Yasmin Garden, the 10th teacher to die in Jamaica since May 11. Garden, who worked in the infant department, died on Saturday morning. She has been ailing for some time, reporters understand. Director of Region 7 within the Ministry of Education and Youth, Barrington Richardson, said the team is saddened at Garden State. It is never business as usual when we lose a colleague and fellow educator who is making a difference in the lives of our students, Richardson stated. Recounting the deaths of several educators over the last few weeks, Richardson said the region has been pushing lifestyle changes among teachers because our health is our business and also it is our wealth. We also have been encouraging all our principals to deliberately include health and wellness sessions, functions and activities that will treat with the psychosocial needs of all categories of staff, he added. Dozens of persons have paid tribute since the school broke news of Garden's passing on its Facebook page. Very sad, condolences to the family, school family, friends and loved ones, SIP, said Lee Warnin. Rosalie Brand said, no words, sigh, no words. Garden, a mother of five children, was a past student of Catholic College of Mandeville, Manchester. At least 10 teachers have died in the last four weeks, some of them suddenly. Jamaica Teachers Association President Winston Smith has urged his colleague educators to make taking care of themselves a priority. Soldier killed in early morning home invasion. A member of the Jamaica Defense Force, 26-year-old Kemar Dennis, was reportedly shot and killed at his home in Central Village, Spanish Town, St. Catherine, Tuesday morning. According to sources, unknown assailants gained access to Dennis' home about 3 a.m. and opened fire, hitting him multiple times. He was transported to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Investigations are ongoing. Late St. Catherine educator Maria Wilson healed as caring dedicated. The school community of Ackles Hill Basic School in Kitsiton, St. Catherine is in mourning over the passing of educator Maria Wilson. Principal Paulette Washington Williams described the 51-year-old as caring and dedicated. Washington Williams says her passing is a great loss to the school where she gave 32 years of service. She says Wilson, who was popularly called Auntie Erica, was loved by students. She's their nurse, she's their mother away from home, and she instilled moral standards in them, said Washington Williams. 
which was ailing for some time. Washington Williams says students have been left devastated that she will not return to the classroom. Because she is a person who loves to see when children are fed, one child said, I want Aunt Erica to come back and feed me. Wilson is the 11 teacher to pass away in a month. At least three dead, multiple injured in Spanish town shootings. At least three people have been confirmed dead as violence erupted in the old capital of Spanish town on Tuesday afternoon. Information reaching reporters are that the Mirage gunmen shot dead a man known as Macriel and another man in the Spanish town market while multiple others were shot and injured. Another man was killed elsewhere in the town in a separate incident. The police were on the scenes. There has been an upsurge in violence across the St. Catherine North Division, with three murders reported in the year over the last 24 hours. There was also a quadruple murder committed in the railway lane area close to town spent last week. Fire at Courthouse Office in Spanish Town the Spanish Town Fire Station has confirmed that several units were battling a blaze at the administrative building of the St. Catherine Parish Court. We can confirm that there was a fire at the courthouse. Units had been dispatched to battle the fire. A representative from the Spanish Town Fire Department told reporters. The town has been tense from yesterday afternoon after three people were shot dead in Spanish Town Market as gang warfare spilled over into the visitor affairs of the old capital. Farmer found dead in Bethel Town, Westmoreland. Relatives of 51-year-old Leon Leonardo Gray are struggling to come to grips with the gruesome murder of the farmer, whose body was found on Monday, June 13, with stab and gunshot wounds. The farmer who resided in York Mountain, Bethel Town in Westmoreland, is believed to have been killed at about 10 p.m. Sunday, June 12. According to the Jamaica Constabulary Forces Corporate Communications Unit, Gray was at a shop in the area when he left for home. Shortly after, explosions were heard. The police were summoned and Gray was found Monday morning lying on the road with stab and gunshot wounds to his body. The deceased cousin, Uncle Shields, told reporters that he has not consumed any food from Monday. I'm very sad, may not eat from Monday. I'm a friend, cousin, everything he shared. In the morning, when I got the phone call about his death, I was so upset, I ran out barefoot and ran down the street and tell everybody, he argued. The community, he said, will not be the same following his cousin's death. The community is not the same. From he died, nobody expected something like this a destroyed child shared. He described the deceased as hardworking. Robert Railway, another of the deceased cousin, shared the same sentiments. He remembered Gray to be hardworking, as he would always be busy on his farm and construction sites. He told reporters that he is saddened by the farmer's death. He is a good person. Me and him party, I'm a cousin, best friend, everything in a one. In done with him farm and in construction work, he recalled. Waller well, said he is still in recovery mode and described the incident as a disaster. Jamaica is collapsing. A disaster, up till now me shock. Me a fear hide because everybody asking me, how me doing, cause we're close, a devastated worry stated. He shared that he is puzzled as he cannot determine the motive for his cousin's killing as he was not aware of him having a difference with anyone. It really shocked me. I can't figure out the motive because if he man somebody in a something, he would let me know, and me no hear him make no complaint, he said. Jamaica Festival Song Competition, back on, Green says. Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, Olivia Green has announced that the Jamaica 60 Festival Song Competition will go ahead as planned. The decision was made during Monday's cabinet meeting. It was decided that the competition should go ahead under amendment rules, which will see the reopening of entries. Last week, Green had announced that the competition was struck off the calendar of events for the island's independence celebrations. She had cited poor quality of entries as the reason for the competition's suspension, similar to that in 2017. According to the minister, the panel that usually selects the finalists for the Jamaica Festival Song Competition had said that it was unable to choose 10 suitable songs from among this year's entries. 
the panel had reported they given the nod to three entries, which was not a sufficient number for a competition. Green said entries will now reopen for a limited period of one week starting Tuesday, June 14, as the panel seeks to identify an additional seven songs for the finals. The minister encouraged people with a good song that they believe can rally the nation to submit their entries. We are looking for the catchy, infectious or inspirational song said to a Jamaican beat that will be on the lips of every man, woman and child this independence, she said. We are waiving the entry fee and we look forward to receiving entries by Tuesday, June 21 at midnight via the online entry portal at the JDC website, www.jcdc.gov.jm, the minister added. The minister further urged entrants to pay attention to the comments of members of the selected panel who found that early entry contained inaccurate lyrical content, infringed copyright, was off-key, poorly recorded, and even contained lyrics that glorified another country and culture. RGD to add 50 fathers to birth certificates on June 20. 50 fathers who want to add their names to their children's birth certificates will benefit from the Registrar General's Department RGD Status D Promotion for Father's Day. The promotion, which will see the fathers benefiting from complementary registrations, will be held on Monday, June 20, and will give fathers whose names would not have been added to their child's birth certificate the opportunity to do so. The announcement was made by RGD CEO Charlton McFarlane. McFarlane said the complementary registrations will be given to the first five applicants at each of its 10 locations across the island. For the registration to be complete, fathers must fill out an addition of father's particulars status form, which can be accessed on the RGD's website at www.rgd.gov.jm or any of its offices. The form must be completed by both parents in the presence of a justice of the peace or notary public. McFarlane said to verify that the father is who he says he is, he will need to provide valid government issued identification and the child's birth certificate, in addition to the completed application form that is to be submitted to the RGD. Once the application has been submitted, it will be processed and a new birth certificate issued to the applicant within 7 to 10 business days or within 6 weeks. Excluding the complementary registrations that will be issued all over applicants must pay a fee of $3,500 if the new birth certificate is required within 7 to 10 days or $1,500 if it is required within six weeks. McFarlane appeals to fathers to take advantage of the opportunity being presented to them. It is not sufficient to only say that you are the father. It is of great importance to know that your status as a father is legally documented. No father wants their children to suffer or to be treated less than. We know that when a child is registered with the information of both parents, then there is greater financial and social protection for the child, he added. For further information on the promotion, individuals may visit the RGD's website or call 876-619-1260 or 876-749-0550. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.